Okay, this is just a really brief overview of the Mark 3D operations module. Uh, this is a tool that allows mine operators to develop uh, short and long-term tailings plans uh, for their facilities very, very quickly uh, and with a minimal amount of interaction with Mark 3D. Um, these models would be set up either by MineBridge or by a consultant and would reflect the design intent of the TSF. It's hooked in to a to the existing water and mass balance uh, via an Excel spreadsheet in this case. Um, and then once this has all been set up, uh, the, the mine owner or the tailings engineers can just come and run through a sequence, a deposition sequence, um, and get some results from Mark 3D about uh, beach elevations, pond elevations, uh, dam raise volumes, all that sort of stuff. Uh, for this example, I'm using the um, some topography that I downloaded. Uh, it's all open source topography, uh, nothing proprietary here, uh, from the USGS Earth Explorer for the Escondida site. So this is just the, the SRTM data. I think it's about a 2001 or 2003 data set. Uh, this is an air a recent air photo from Google Earth. You can see that the data set doesn't have any tailings in it. Uh, so what I did was go back and reconstruct the tailing surface based, just based on the photos and some, some estimates of beach slopes. Um, again, this is all information that I've created. It's nothing to do with anything that Escondida are doing. And then if I put my air photo on here, so you can see there's a dam that's been built. I've deposited some tailings. I'll just put some contours on here that you can see. <clears throat> and so there's our tailing surface. It doesn't matter. I didn't go to the effort of matching it up exactly, but it's close enough for the intent, for the purpose of this. So there's my starting surface. And what I'm going to do is come back and in this instance, I'm using a, doing a short range plan. So a 12 month plan on monthly increments. I've made some assumptions about beach slopes, densities, tailings production, all that sort of stuff. Uh, so what this model does is that for each time step, um, we allocate tailings uh, to different discharge points. In, so again, for this case, I've got um, Two, two lines, one that services the east side of the TSF, one that services the west. I have a range of discharge points along each of those, or zones along each of these, and I can allocate um, material uh, just as a percentage of total of tailings to those discharge points, and then Mark will go and deposit them. Down here for a pond, um, we're working with a fixed volume pond, so it's a 2 million cubic meter pond. Um, and it's going to it's going to goal seek not only the beach elevations based on the volumes, but also the pond elevation based on our target pond volume. So this is a project that's been set up. I'm not going to discuss how it's been set up in this in this uh, demonstration. Again, from the purpose of an operator, the assumption would be that either Mindbridge would set it up or a consultant could uh, set it up also. So to run through this 12 month deposition sequence here, I'm going to just go to sim uh, sorry operations run and run full simulation. Uh, the base plan scenario is what I'm working on. And so this will go through each of these months and building on top of my base topography, which is the, the SRTM data plus the reconstructed tailing surface, it's going to come through and pour tailings here. Then it will take that output and then go to the next month and then the next month and, and so on and just go through these different steps or through these different time steps until it's completed the plan. Um, I'm just going to We'll just start a timer here as well, just so we can get an idea of how long this takes. Here in the Mark 3D window, it's a little hard to see just because of the scale of everything, but you, you do get, you do see the di discharge, um, the, the tailings beaches forming over time. Um, and there's our pond, so now it's gone on to run two. So it's taking the output from run one and then building on top of that. So here we've just got it running as um, short as monthly intervals. This uh, this, this tool also works just as well with long range plans. We could change this to be one year increments and then make some assumptions about how, you know, over the course of a year, how much of this, how this tailings is deposited around the perimeter and then come through and pour it. And so that way we could go through and do something like a life of mine plan very, very quickly. Uh, we also have the option up here of doing dam raises. Um, so we can just manually specify the elevation we want to raise a dam to in a given time step. Um, in this example, I've actually got it doing automatic dam raises when it's needed. Um, <clears throat> just it, if it decides that it needs to do a dam raise, so if the discharge points uh, along the, if the beach elevation near the dam here is getting too close to the to the um, crest elevation, it'll actually come in and put a raise. Uh, otherwise, it'll just you know, just keep going without the dam raise. Here, I am running a 
a deposition um, sequence. So it's, it's going from month to month to month. I could also just run them one at a time. So if it turned out that, you know, as I was doing this deposition run, if it needed a little bit of fiddling about how I'm going to allocate tailings or where do I need to allocate tailings, um, maybe to keep the pond in a certain location, I could just do it one run at a time. And then when I'm happy, move on to the next run and the next run. So I might run this, tweak these numbers a bit. Then when I'm happy, come to the next one uh, and so on. So I'm going to just uh, let this uh, run for the next five or 10 minutes. Uh, we'll, I'm going to stop speaking and we'll uh, speed the video up so you're not just sitting here for 10 minutes waiting for it to run. And then we'll go through some post-processing of the output data shortly uh, afterwards. Okay, and we're done. So that's just over 14 minutes to go through and do a whole 12, uh, 12 deposition runs. So we can see that it's populated our, our output tab here with uh, various information. So I've got any dam raises that happened, the volume of dams, the elevation, of the dam crest. Uh, for each, each, de each um, deposition line, we've got our beach elevations in each zone. For the east and west lines for our pond, we can see how the pond elevation changes over time for a given pond volume. Also our surface area, that's, a, that's good to feed back into our water balance. In muck, <clears throat> we can see for our, within our base plan here, we've got, um, we've got deposition results for each of the runs that we did uh, as well. So we've got all the files here if we want to do any post-processing on, on this data. Um, everything to support the numbers here is there. So I'm going to do some post-processing. Um, I've got a, just a script here that goes through and for each deposition run, it's going to add the outline of the tailings onto our air photo, uh, put some tailings contours on it, uh, show our pond, and then go to two different viewpoints that I've defined. One is a plan view and one is looking at it at the TSF from the Southwest. Once it's created those images, uh, it's going to save them. You can see down here, it's saving them in our, in our um, TSF directory but it's also adding them into a PowerPoint presentation here. So we've got two sets of images, one for our plan view, one for our Southwest view. And so now we've got some numbers that support uh, our plan. We've got some visual representations of our plan that we can, we can look at and we can, you know, we can scroll through them and see what's going on. So as we do this, we might look at some of these uh, run results and decide that we don't like what's happening. So perhaps on run seven, we can see, the pond's starting to get quite narrow here. And then what we might do is come back and redo run seven, where we maybe allocate less tailings on the east line here and reallocate it somewhere else. Uh, but then we can do, we can redo this run and then all the subsequent runs, uh, starting at run seven. So we wouldn't need to go back and do every single run up to here. We just need to start at the, uh, the run we want to make changes. And then we can go back and refine our plan and um, get an answer. So if we, you know, we also, like I said, we in this case, it ran through the whole sequence. We do have the option of going through and doing individual time steps. So if we are in a situation like this where maybe we, we find that every time step we do need to manipulate the uh, the tailings allocations, we can just do them run one, one run at a time, run it, see if it meets our goal, refine it if not. If it, if it does, move on to the next run and therefore build up a set of deposition sequences or a, a deposition sequence pretty quickly. Now you can do all this stuff by hand in Muck. Um, the, the downside of that is that it is a, you know, it's, it's a little more work. The, the operator, the, the Muck user has to go through and just organize the files. They have to fill out all the dialog boxes and all that sort of stuff. Um, the beauty of this sort of system where it's all automated is that if you decide you've, you've done a run and you don't like it, you can tweak some things, do it again. Maybe you want to do this a run, do some sensitivity where we have maybe a, a larger or a smaller pond or, a different deposition order. We pour from different points at different times or different beach slopes or different densities. The beauty of this is that we can just change some of those inputs and then run it again, get a, get a new answer. So we could do some sensitivity analysis on our TSF really, really quickly once we've got a, a model set up. So that's just a really quick overview of the Mark 3D operations module. Um, like I said, it's a new module within Mark 3D uh, aimed 
directly at TSF operators and just giving them the tools to, to generate deposition plans themselves with the, a minimum amount of user interaction, with um, users having a minimum knowledge minimum knowledge of Mark 3D and um, you know and a lot of support from from Mindbridge or from their consultants to make sure that these plans once they're set up they run and they are modified if needed to reflect changes in the operations so thanks for watching um, if anyone has any questions about this please feel free to contact us and we'd be more than happy to arrange a demo or to chat some more about it thanks again bye